Jerry, but hopefully you can organize Hi, this is Bob, the old ham. Uh, working on a Heathkit SS9000 synthesized transceiver. This transceiver was brought out in uh, 1982. Uh, this was the very first one built in the lab. I built it and I've completed it in uh, November of 1981. Uh, I was given the opportunity to do that uh, as a way of uh, entering the engineering staff. I worked in the service department and they needed somebody to do this work and I applied for it. They gave me a two weeks trial and they gave me boxes of parts and schematic diagrams and said build it. So I built the very first SS9000 and this is it. I had a chance to obtain it. My friend in uh, Kalamazoo had this rig uh, in boxes with a whole bunch of parts and he was moving and he said do you want these things and I said yes and we made a trade deal and I acquired this radio I did not know at the time and I don't think he knew at the time that this was unit number one but when I got digging in the box and got this chassis out and saw the little stickers that I had put on there in November of 1981 I thought holy cow this was the very first SS 9000 and I put every part into it so here it is. It's working great. I, uh, I had to do a whole lot of work on it. All the parts had been removed and put into boxes. Some of the boards were damaged. Some of the wiring was damaged. Some of the controls were damaged. Some of the controls were missing and all that. And uh, so it was an extreme severe basket case. You will notice that it has been slid along a bench a lot in Heath Kit. It was kept there as an engineering test unit. It was engineering test unit number one as well as serial number one uh, prototype or as Heath Kit called them a proof build unit. It works on all bands, uh, all the HF bands now I see the HFO unlocked. That's because I have it in between two, two uh, positions on the uh, band switch. And when you do that, the, the high frequency oscillator unlocks and it shows you that. It's part of the error messages. So it has 160, 80, 40, 20, all the way on up to 10 meters. And it's a really nice working transceiver really good audio and on receive and transmit. Notice the knobs. The knobs were vendor sample knobs that were sent. They are slightly off color. You notice they're gray where the original knobs, this is an original, uh, original production knobs were brown. So this is an original production knob. These were vendor sample knobs that we put on the very first unit. And these knobs have set screws and you will notice uh, if you know these rigs that the knobs that came on the production units were push-on knobs and these are set screw knobs. This particular unit was uh, modified as just a matter of disconnecting a wire on the uh, on the one circuit board and when you disconnect that one wire then the uh, passband shift which changes the pitch of the received and transmitted signals that changes the pitch of the received signals and this one had been modified just by removing that one wire uh, to uh, make it work on transmit as, re as well as receive. I really like that. I have another one here that I use all the time and I have done that to that one too. And by doing that I can turn the uh, passband shift down and it gives me a low pitch voice. The guys like that for the local rag chews. Or if I'm working DX I'll turn it all the way up for high pitch. So it's kind of neat that you can change the pitch of your uh, transmitted voice as well as your received voice that way. It's got RIT, it's got noise blanker. I don't think the noise blanker on these works very good at all. It probably, it, it's set up for ignition noise. Uh, and so it, most of the time in the, in the QTH you get uh, line noise and stuff like that. It doesn't do much for that. And what else was I going to talk about here? Oh, let's show you inside here. This is the uh, this is the uh, synthesizer board right here. 
there's the synthesizer board and down there is the controller board you notice the dots on the chips that means that I've taken all those chips out and I've tested them tested them cleaned the pins and put them back in I tested them by putting it in putting those chips into a working unit to get this one working uh, like I say it was a severe basket case it has fast up and down tuning just by pushing these buttons you can scoot around on the band it also has shift you got you got two VFOs I would I wouldn't call them I, yeah I guess they are two VFOs uh, but well, it's a single VFO but it shifts around like two and you can change your receiver and transmitter right now it would it would receive on 3922 and transmit on 3807.7 so you can change those like that and work split if you want to that's really great for DX and things like that so that's about all I can uh, remember right now to uh, to bring up it's got RIT uh, it's got variable AGC it's got two positions two positions for the AGC RF gain AF gain microphone gain it's got a speech processor uh, I rarely turn that on because I don't think that does a whole lot. It's about like the noise blanker. It doesn't do a whole lot. Uh, this is delay for VOX and it's also their de the delay, delay for CW. These work nice on CW and they've got the built-in. You see a CW wide, CW medium, CW narrow. The narrow is 200 hertz, the, wide, the medium is 500 and I believe the CW wide is... Uh, is um, 2.1 uh, that's the same as your sideband filters and let's see what else I guess that's it they're a, they're a great rig and uh, a, f a lot of fun to operate so this was the first one ever produced and I put it together part by part just using schematic diagrams and I did that in uh, uh, November of 1981 so that's it, guys. 73s and good DX.